Welcome to the Boardman Park Report. I'm Matthew Elton for the Boardman Schools Television Network. Joining me today are the Board Park members, members Joyce Mistovich and Trent Kaler. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Matt, it's good to um, be here. I understand Joyce has been in the Park Board for nine years and you've been there for five? Yes. Uh, what really interests you, you into going into the Park Board? Well, Trent and I both have a story that relates to our youth. And um, for me, personally, my dad, there used to be an ice rink that was in the park, and um, it was actually a low-lying area that was filled with water and frozen. And on Sundays after church in the winter, my father would take my sisters and I ice skating. And what is now Baird Cabin, which was an older cabin um, when I was a child, uh, you would go in and you can have hot chocolate and my parents loved the park and would take us there for picnics and uh, we'd have family events there and then I worked um, as Trent did in a much more laborious position with Trent but I worked at the day camp at Boardman Park before I got married and um, for three years I was a I handled all the arts and crafts and then I was a supervisor of the camp program, which continues to be a very successful program in our park. So I've always had um, a deep admiration um, and fondness of all the many activities that take place within Boardman Park. I, I've seen the day camp there and it, it actually did look pretty interesting, but I never got to do it as a kid. It has grown tremendously since I was around. And the, the ice rink used to be where Kidstown is now. So a lot of people oh. that are familiar yeah. with Kidstown, that's where the ice rink used to be. Um, you know, my story is very similar. I started back in my youth. We did not have the Boardman baseball fields. We actually played at Boardman Park. Boardman Park was the Boardman Community Baseball Association's place. And so, you know, going from playing ball there to working on the maintenance side when I was in, you know, your guys' age, when I was in high school and early college, um, to then coming back, I left the area for a few years and then when I came back um, you know one of the first things was to be asked if I would be on the board you know be a, a park board member a park you know whatever we call ourselves commissioner commissioners um, so they just felt like a natural fit you know I think Dan um, recognized that you know you have a, 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 a young child who's gone up through Borman Park worked Borman Park you know seen all the differences seen some of the good changes, positive changes, and now they're on the park board, well that's, you know, that's a, that's a champion. Yeah, especially with growing, growing up and working there, and yes. you can improve it from what it was when you were a kid. Exactly, exactly. So, yes, somewhat similar stories in that we both have worked our way through the Boardman Park system, if you want to call it yeah. that. Um, Mr. Kaler, I see that Boardman Park's tagline where the benefits are endless. What, are, what does that mean? We, we're trying to provide you know, our, our, our residents enough things that they can do for no cost or very little cost that will allow them to stay in our area and, and, and reap the benefits of, of our you know, 227 acres of the park. Um, you know, I, I, to, to go into detail and how we do that um, may not be you know the best thing to do right now but just to say that behind the scenes we take all of these national surveys that we're part of from a park standpoint and we make sure that we are providing all of the opportunities that we can for not only the residents but also the non-residents you know I mean anybody can rent our cabins anybody can come onto the premise I mean you know, I mean, we have you know over a half a million people coming. It's not the same. You know, we only have forty thousand some people in Boardman, so there's other people yeah. besides Boardman yeah. residents coming and using our facilities. But you know, the basic idea is we're trying to provide everybody, every walk of life, the opportunity to use the park. Yeah, that's that's a really nice thing to do. And I know from personal experience, from being in the buildings for like graduation parties and stuff, they're really nice buildings. Thank you. Um, as Mr. Kayla mentioned, there are four categories of benefits. What are the four categories? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that this whole benefits movement, um, as Trent was talking about, is such that 
We are trying to provide for community, and we have done this for a very long time, um, an opportunity for lifelong living and lifelong learning. So we actually strive in Boardman Tar Park to create an environment for families, for friends, um, for people of all ages, from a young child to adults um, in the programming that we do have. As far as um, the actual benefits, um, community is one, and we want people um, to live long, productive lives, and in doing so, participation, studies have shown, in green space and outdoor environments um, is quite the thing to do. Um, going for a walk, so that's you know very easily um, done if you come to Boardman Park. I mean, I know you can walk in your neighborhood, and personally, my husband, my daughter, and I do, but we prefer, we live very close to Boardman Park, and we prefer walking in Boardman Park. Um, so living and interacting within your community is one of the benefits. Another benefit is actually, um, as I said, each individual um, person in their life has an opportunity to learn and grow, and we offer opportunities, as Trent had said, um, in our indoor facilities and outdoor facilities. We have programs um, that we offer for the kids, as we talked about, for camp. We have our Kids Town, which was created by the community. It was a community-built built, um, recreation space, and um, we actually have senior citizen programs. We also provide, um, in an opportunity, uh, economic opportunity, um, it's really what the park is actually is an investment in the future of our community. And I don't mean just the community of Boardman, but I mean the community at large. As Trent referred to, um, actually last year we had more people attend the park than we have in any year. We had a half a million people, um, and that is a record. So we are providing for that um, as well. Environmentally, by preserving parks and natural green space, um, we are actually enhancing our entire area that we live in and making this area more desirable for businesses, more desirable for homeowners, and creating an environment that is a safe place to travel. And um, Boardman Park is really on top of it. Um, we have cameras that we've installed in our park to make sure that our residents of Boardman and people that come into the park are in a safe space and um, really the basic whole thrust of it is the appreciation of beauty and nature and I think that when people do that and they realize how much our environment impacts our life as a whole and to have a greater appreciation for nature, I think it's a win-win situation for not just the community, but for individuals that live in that community. You mentioned the senior days. What, what, mm -hmm. do, you, like, what do they do for the senior days? Um, actually, it's um, one day um, a month, which we reach out to senior citizens, and there are all kinds of programs. It costs a dollar to come and they're provided lunch, they do exercises, they have activities, they play bingo, and um, specifically, we are reaching out to Sunrise Living in Poland and to um, a couple other areas that are local. However, any resident in the community, it's advertised, whether you go on the website or whether you call the park office, any senior citizen in our community um, or community at large is yeah. welcome to attend. Our they call them senior fun days yeah. because it's a lot of fun. I was talking to um, Mr. Kaler earlier and he told me that the senior fun days were actually because they were supposed to have a recreational center built but that ended up not happening and I thought that was pretty interesting and nice that the park would do that. Right, uh, that, w that yeah, was in the yeah. works yeah, a long- years ago. Yes, a long ago. Before Trent and I were on the board, Right. Yeah, there was so, discussion yeah. of um, a senior recreation center, and um, it was during the time when the Y was being built. I yes. Think. Okay. Yes. And as a result of that, you, you that's didn't definitely want to it. compete or you know or just 
too many projects going on in board at right. the time trying to adhere to you know offering recreation to all kinds of people uh, so we decided uh, the park at that time decided not to pursue that um, as a result though we've tried to incorporate you know this this opportunity for seniors to come in and you know you, if you're in with a group of people you come to that you might meet somebody new you might you know it's just an opportunity for you to interact with other people of your age which is nice yeah that is yeah. always nice meeting new people that are that like can have the sh same memories of childhood as you do yes yeah. um stir up some new friendships yeah, yeah. right the park recently was in a survey for a national survey. Can you tell me what, how like, we stack up against other sure. parks? Sure. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to read some of these statistics. But actually, um, the park has participated um, in this survey. It's National Recreation and Parks um, survey that has taken place. It's like a national association. Um, annually, and we've participated since 2012 in the survey. Um, so some of the most significant data that's been reporting, reported is comparing Boardman Park to other similar parks and recreational areas at the national level. So as far as operating expenditure per capita, the national median is spending $84.48. Boardman Park spends $35.64. As far as a total revenue per capita, the national median is spending $21.27, and Boardman Park spends like half of that, even $11.68. The total tax expenditure per capita for the national median is $53.47, but Boardman Park spends only $23.96. Our operating expense, expense per acre of land that the park maintains, the national median is $8,512, and the park spends $5,842. Um, as far as our operating expense for full-time employees, the national median spending is $101, and, or I'm sorry, $101,167 for all of the full-time employees. Boardman Park has a very small staff that does an amazing job and we spend $83,672. The median number of acres of parkland maintained per um, requirements of um, the federal standards and all is the national median is 11.7 and Boardman Park maintains 22.7. So we're small but we're mighty. And the number of participants per program, the national median is about 300 per program, where Bourbon Park is 1,320. So basically, first and foremost, as I referred to, we have at Bourbon Park a very, very dedicated staff that is extremely hardworking. Trent and I, um, as well as Park Commissioner um, Ken Goldsboro, are very proud of our employees. and. Starting from the top with our executive director, Dan Slegel, going to the office staff, who is extremely efficient um, in the daily operations of what transpires within the park, to our recreation director, Karen McCollum, to our grounds crew um, under Jim Ferrett, to our maintenance crew under Warren Gratz. We have a staff that we really couldn't be prouder of. And it is through the dedication of all of these people that Bourbon Park is where we are today. And I think to expand on that a little bit, um, you know, the key things that, that we look as, as park commissioners is, is how much are we providing to the community for the amount that the community is paying through their tax dollars to us. And, and the statistics that we get um, prove that um, you know, there, there's very little, uh, relative term for everybody paying taxes, but very little of their dollar, tax dollars, goes to, to maintain the park. And the park has been able to maintain the, the, the space and provide the educational opportunities and the programs that we have for basically the same tax revenue we've gotten over the last 30 years, mm -hmm. let's say. 
or beyond. So, so think about that. Think, you know, just just in in in, in theories. Think, you know, 20 years ago we had 200 and some thousand people coming to the park, and we had maybe a little bit less than 200 acres or whatever. Now we have 227. Plus you had our the wetlands place and, and stuff like that. We're we're you know we have a lot. We have a little bit more land that we take care of, and we now have 500 and you know, 540,000 people coming to the park. And we've been able to do that with the same tax dollar, you know, the same amount of money that each of you give us, thank you. Um, you know, we've been able to increase all of that. You know, we've added the disc golf, we've added, I mean, you take all the projects that we've yeah. added and, and, you know, the bottom line is, is these surveys really prove to us and hopefully then through, you know, through to you guys uh, that that we do a very good job of running our park very efficiently, um, you know, and, and and very very well to maintain the the limited amount of tax resource tax revenue that we're we're asking you guys to support us with. You mentioned the park was at an all time attendance record this year. Um, can you like elaborate on that? Like, what were the attendance? Well, I think that you know, you know, we've got a bunch of events coming up, and maybe maybe the idea is just you know, again, we had over five hundred and forty some thousand people come, and um, you know, it couldn't be done without all of the events that we have going on throughout the year, uh, you know, summer camps and, and and all those things, you know, music in the park every Thursday throughout the summer, people can come and and enjoy the park, you know, a band a specific, you know. We had the 4th of July, you know, we have the, um, the, the Memorial Day Parade ends at Boardman yeah. Park and we have a very, uh, very uh, nice ceremony to recognize all of the veterans and things like that. So, um, you know, but I think, I think some of the things that, that really drive attendance are some of the uh, things coming up in the fall. Uh, seems that maybe a lot of our attendance is as a result of these next couple of months' activities. Right. And and you know let's let's give you an idea of what we've got going. Yeah. Um, you know in the future, so that, you know not only will they, everybody know about it, but but you can also see where our attendance is yeah. is increased as a result of these activities. So um, you know let's you know let's yeah. talk about yeah. some of those I, things. Um, I can share with you some of those fall activities yeah. we have too, and as Trent had said. Um, our, our concerts in the park are hugely attended, yeah. as well as our family days. So when Trent was talking about two-year-olds, I mean, it's one night my husband, my daughter, and I, it, it was early, you know, before, um, you know, shortly after dinner time, we were walking in the park, and I had forgotten it was a family day, and we were back in the, going back through the back by the uh, wildflower trail and such in the back in the woods, and all of a sudden I heard this sound, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I think it's a family day. I think it's the covered wagon, I mean the wagon, you know, with the um, bales of hay that's taking kids on rides. Sure enough, families were on there. I'm like, okay, move over. So we do have that and provide, you know, all of the, the family days that are frequently also. So we have coming up one really big thing, um, and Karen McCollum brought me up to speed with all this, is the Baby Bargain Boutique. It is you might think, what is that? It's this actually, it's a huge, huge like garage sale in the park um, where people, moms buy from other moms. And it's actually coming up soon. Um, it is Saturday, September 23rd. And um, it's uh, a great way that you can, it's free to bring. You can set up a table. Um, there's lots of furniture, clothing, donations, and so on, and it's in uh, Master's Visit Pavilion and on the bocce court. Um, we also have this Howl Oween Canine Carnival that's coming up on Sunday, September 24th. Trent talked about that earlier. So that's something where we have pets, we have a, a contest um, for dressing up your um, dog. Um, Boardman Police joins forces, the canine units there, um, they'll give um, some um, demonstration of training the canines. Uh, local veterinarians are on hand. Um, also, one of the big reasons our park is as successful as it is, is that across the nation, dog parks are very, very popular. Yeah. And we have a dog park that provides and a again, lot of that space. Was a community, that was a community mm -hmm. effort. You know, there was a group of, 
of people that came to the park and said, we would like to start a dog park, you know, a fenced in space where you can let dogs roam freely. And, um, you know, they, they raised the funds to, uh, you know, provide the, the necessary means to provide the fencing yeah. and the, the plan and all that stuff. We gladly accept, you know, the maintenance part yeah. and pay for that again, you know, using that good tax dollars. But, um, you know, again, another community thing that came yeah. as a result of the community coming to us and saying, we want a dog park and we embraced it and we've got plenty of people to do it. And um, so that's, that's another thing that, you know, we, we need to point out that everybody is part of that. So, so um, yes, and with the dog park, as with everything else we do that the community comes to us about, we do research to find out what's the feasibility, what's the trend in parks across the country that are similar in nature to us. So basically, you know, there's a lot of other activities we have, you know, coming up here in fall. Yeah, we have Boardman Rotary. Rotary's Boardman October, Rotary's October, Festival, October Festival, which is yeah. October 1st, hugely attended. Um, we have the pumpkin carve out contest. It runs for a lot of weekends. Mm -hmm. You carve the pumpkin, there's pumpkin judging. Um, you could come and see the pumpkin display in the evening. It's beautiful, lit up at night. Um, there's also Boo Through the Woods, which is not meant to be scary by any means. I mean, it's just the boo effect and not like yeah. horrible things in some places. Um, and we have family friendly, as I said, talked about ha um, haunted hay wagons, but are family friendly. And the proceeds of all of those um, wagon rides go to 4-H, the Key Club, Boardman High School, you guys, your Key Club, um, Panda, also here in Boardman Schools. And so these are all family friendly activities. But truly, if you want any information on any of our programs yeah. and what we offer, if you are savvy to online computers, go online, check it out. I just, as I was going through things last night, went online, put in Boardman Park to look at a couple things Trent and I were talking about this morning, call the park. Yeah. Our wonderful office staff is always friendly and happy to help you out. And um, we'd love to see you in our green oasis. Thank you guys for being here and coming and answering all the questions that people might have had. Is there anything else you guys would like to add? No. I don't think so, but just Matthew, thank you. I see that you have a bright, promising future, and BS10 is lucky to have all of you guys out there behind the scenes as well on board, right. as well as the new addition of Amy Rodenovic. So all right. I think you're all in good hands. Yeah. yeah. Go. go Spartans. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> go Spartans. We would always like to remind our viewers there are a lot of that goes on at Boardman Park and you can always go to the Boardman Park website, which is boardmanpark.com, to check out what happens and what may be fun and exciting for your family. For BSTN, I'm Matthew Elton. See you at the park.